bringing violence, civil unrest, yes, full of anarchists and full of hate. This is the way that they feel like that they need to solve our nation's problems through violence. They can't be peaceful. They got to stir up distension. And these folks are trying to further divide our country. Fotis, notice just one Dem has come out and has condemned Antifa. Just one. And it was a miracle, I said yesterday. It's a miracle. It's a start, but it's not enough. It's amazing what people will prioritize. It's amazing what people will be vocal about and the things that you think that they should be more vocal about. It's lack of common sense. It's amazing what they decide that they want to hug a tree or do something that's much more important uh, than not allowing others to be able to assemble peacefully than allowing a hate group. And if they're not in it and they're, they're not included in it, and if they don't want to be associated with it, then they need to condemn it. You, there's no other way around it because they're certainly not peaceful. And is that what they're about? If that's the party of dissension and division, I thought that they were the party of uniting people. That's what they say. Uh, we're all for all people. We want the peaceful assembly of all folks. We don't want these bad things to happen. Oh, no, no, no. On my first hour, I mentioned the U.S. military showing force, something they do for these military maneuvers over North Korea. But the U.S. military flew two B-1B supersonic bombers and two F-35 fighter jets over South Korea. And this is today, by the way, a show of force. Uh, U.S. aircraft were participating in training with South Korea F-15 fighter jets. The South Korean official said he didn't want to be named, citing office rules. Now, such flyovers are common when animosity rises on the Korean peninsula, which is technically in a state of war because of the 1950-53 Korean War ended with an armistice, not a peace treaty. North Korea on Tuesday flew a potentially nuclear-capable intermediate-range ballistic missile over northern Japan and later called it a meaningful prelude to containing the U.S. territory of Guam. And then a day later, the U.S. Defense Agency announced that it had shot down a medium-range ballistic missile to the coast of Hawaii in a new test of its missile defense system at sea. So, folks, this continues back and forth. Trump says in a tweet that uh, was tweeted out today, he says the U.S. has been talking to North Korea and paying them extortion money for 25 years. Talking is not the answer. Now, if you want to read into that, there's something there, folks, don't you think? On Tuesday, Washington and its allies called for an emergency U.N. Security Council meeting, but seemed to fall short on a new idea for stopping North Korea's nuclear missile advances, which are increasingly putting the U.S. mainland within range. Threatening and destabilizing actions only increase the North Korean regime's isolation in the region and among all nations of the world, Trump said, after the North's missile soared above 1,700 miles that's uh, 2,700 kilometers in the Pacific Ocean, triggering alert warnings in northern Japan and shutters throughout Northeast Asia. And we have said this past week, all options are on the table. That's Bush. Or excuse me. <laughs> that's Bush. Wrong. I've been around too long. Um, I would think that Bush would have said the same thing. When they have all options on the table. But uh, Trump said that. The White House is saying that the Pentagon is agreeing with it. Rex Tillerson, you know, he's trying to put a, 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 a calm face on it. And, you know, good for him as Secretary of State. You know, we're trying to, with all channels, all back channels, trying to have a conversation. Uh, it's not working. They went over Japan, for goodness sakes. What else are they going to do? Folks, they're getting closer and closer, and they these people are rogue as can be. 
And these people, if they are not stopped, something bad is going to happen. People are going to get killed. Our people, somebody in Japan is going to get killed, a mis- misfire, something bad is going to happen. And they say, oh, yeah, well, we don't shoot them down because we want to learn. And when they come back from the atmosphere, they almost always implode. What if they just get it right one time? Just one time. And it's over for millions of people. We can't have it. We can't afford it. We should not allow them to be experimenting when they have broken every single U.N. mandate that's put out there. And it's blatantly disrespectful to the world and to the United States, folks, the greatest military on the planet. We should not allow these people to acquire these weapons. And it should scare China. I would think so. And it seems even China, even China, as big as they are, they can't stop them. Who's going to? That's the question. We'll be watching it. Folks, if you're leaving out, be careful on the highways as you are driving and filling up. Appreciate you. You can take four of the people with you anywhere online, 24 hours a day. If you're leaving your local market where you listen to For the People on this radio station, appreciate you. Remember, For the People counts on your generous donations and your ongoing support. We appreciate you so much, all our partners from coast to coast. Keith Allen, For the People, saying all the best. May God bless.